we're back for our second match of the day. We've got a total of three C-Deck matches coming your way, and by the time today's action is done, only one team will remain from the lower bracket. They will face Newbie in the grand finals of the C-Deck New Star Cup, the first ever tournament put on by C-Deck, and hopefully we see more events from them in the future. This one has been quite a bit of fun to cast so far, but with that said, we are in the lower bracket. Our first match of today saw IG face off against LGD C-Deck. They... Had a bit of a slow start, but in the end, just used their veteran poise and better decision-making. Took a pretty convincing 1-0 victory in the BO1. They move on now. They face Vici Gaming. The winner of this best of three will play, play DK later today. And the winner of that match will be Newbie's opponent in the Grand Finals, which I'll be casting with Cinder in, in uh, I believe it's two days' time, on June 23rd. We'll have more information about that Grand Finals to come, but for now, well, let's focus on Vici versus IG. It's a best of three, so we'll have a little bit more margin for error here for both teams. And with that said, the draft is underway. I think the one interesting ban here to point out is this Nature's Profit ban from VT Gaming. Something that we were seeing other Chinese teams banning against IG a few weeks ago. Uh, mainly because YYF just plays the hero so well. They also have run it for Luo on occasion. So IG a team that can be flexible with the Profit pick. And it suits their style well. They like to take fairly early to mid-game engagements. They don't really play like a very turtley style. Although they can take it late when need be. So Profit's just that Knight's mixture of can join the fights and apply pressure and can also sit back and uh, just uh, split push slash farm, go for Midas, go for more of a late game style if needed. So I do like this profit ban, but they, they are giving away a lot to ban it. They give away an Ember, something that 430 has shown quite a bit of mastery of historically, and also give away the Bat, so Team Orange in the house for IG. It's a little bit early for Halloween, I must say, but well, we'll see if they pick up any... Any black heroes to go along with that, and well, with that being said, Vici reply with the Tide. So they get a pretty annoying hero to deal with. Uh, a hero that, he's not really a great lasso target in general. You lasso Tidehunter, you're generally giving him a free blink dagger, unless you pull him away from your team. So I do like Tide matching up against Bat in that sense. Uh, he's also pretty tanky, and... The one concern is that Ember is good at eluding the Ravage. If he times his Remnant dodges or Sleight of Fist correctly, you can dodge it that way as well. So, Vici going for a, a very strong teamfight ganking composition. Same for IG. IG with a bit more access into late game thus far. But, yeah, we'll see. Uh, kind of the go-to bans nowadays is the Enigma and Bane both get banned out. The Bane, just really nice setup for Mirana Arrows. This does leave a Shadow Demon Five in the pool. And it suggests that maybe IG will consider some sort of BKB carry. Uh, I guess the one thing is, Batrider's already likely to build on at some point, and that's where your Fiend's Grip is just better against a, a Batrider than Shadow Demon is. Even if he blinks it, you could still grip him and prevent that lasso, so uh, we'll see. But generally, when you ban the bait over the Shadow Demon here, it's just you want to pick up heroes that go for BKBs. So, um, with that being said, Shadow Shaman gets banned by Vici. Uh, they'll also remove out the Invoker for... Uh, for IG, we've seen 430 play it, uh, with the Ember Spirit already being picked up, though I think they're looking at a, a Luo Invoker as the potential pickup, so, yeah, uh, Vici banning heroes that can go for Roche pretty easily, good split pushers, a hero at Invoker that can synergize well with the bat, gives you a, a very strong fire strat and pickoff potential, lasso into Sunstrike, Ember to set up those ganks with the Sleight of Fist hearing chains. Hmm, so, yeah, for IG now, they'll need their supports, the Enchantress has been ignored thus far. And they'll go Rubik, so they get a hero that can punish Radiant the Tidehunter, team. Arrow's really nice to steal, Leap is not too shabby, and of course Ravage is very nice to steal. But I'm a little surprised the Enchantress has been ignored. I guess IG are thinking, well, Vici aren't going to go for it now, they've already picked up Mirana, they want a hero that can set up for the Arrows ideally. They could run a farming Mirana, but generally we see Sylar on a hero that has a little more, bit more late game punching power. Um, heroes like Invoker, which Vici banned, uh, his Weaver is one of the big ones, Morphlane is another go-to Silar here as of late, and most of these match up pretty well against IG, I would say. He did play, uh, let's see, He's what has he played time. recently? Is there anything unusual? They played a best of three for WVW in the semifinal. This was three days ago, and in that series, Silar played the Weaver, the Weaver, and an Anti-Mage. Yeah, both teams have played an Anti-Mage on occasion. Um, we've seen IG ran it. IG actually won their Anti-Mage game. Uh, the one that they played against Vici in that series. So I am making a slight resurgence and you know, it's just it's like the, the, the it's like the cycle of the seasons. Whenever TI draws near, Anti Mage starts to see more play in Chinese Dota. It seems virtually inevitable. Uh, he may not see the level of play he was getting at TI two slash TI three, but he'll see a little bit more. He's always just that that kind of closer type carry that 
you have a lot more margin for error. You can take it late game. You're very difficult to gank. And it's just, uh, it's an annoying hero to play against. The top tier teams can deal with him, but a slight misstep is much more costly. So they did break the orange strap, by the way. Sad to say. They get the Rubik. Green and orange is just a, it's an ugly color combo. Uh, you got to give the edge here to Vici with the, the nice spread of blue, green, and red. But yeah, they go bristle back for IG. So they get their offlaner potentially actually no i guess it's gonna be a i guess it's likely to be an hmm let's see how do they want to lane this here generally i would say it's 430 on the ember and then an off lane bat for yyf safe lane bristle back for luo that's the laning setup i'm leaning towards for ig i think if they do that they'll want a good pushing support so that's where i see the enchantress fitting in nicely here they can go for it with the last pick then they can rotate in the bristle back lane rubik can join the enchantress go for a smoke gank and uh, just take the tier one, roll it, roll it up, and work towards the tier two. Chen is uh, another option. You know, the send back is, and the hand of God, pretty nice with Ember Bat. You can let the Bat jump in aggressively, and or Ember jump in aggressively, and then send them home and stall pushes that way. So we'll see what they want to do here. Ig with decent access to Roshan. Bristleback's pretty good against Roche, uh, and if they get like an Enchantress, pick up a Medallion, they can do it. But they're not by any means the best Roshan lineup. On the side of Vici, a team that's really known for their more group up and fight style of play in the mid game. They'll go Dragonite here, and I wonder if this sets up for a Pugna last pick. They can run the DK mid, the Tidehunter off lane, Pugna safe lane, and Pugna is quite a nice matchup against Bristleback. He does all his damage physically, and you've got Decrepify to, to negate that. And also, he's usually quite tanky, the, the Bristleback, but you throw out a Disruption, Soulcatcher into Arrow, to follow it up with a Decrepify Nether Blast, and. Even a Bristleback will not live through that damage that early on. But yeah, we see an anti-mage ban for IG, so they're expecting a different strat. With the Shadow Demon picked up already, this AM would be a, a pretty good carry option. You get the, the 5 AM strat, you can siege with the Dragonite in the front lines, the AM Manta Illusions coming and hitting on towers, but uh, I think Vici is going for a different style. I'm more expecting something like the Pugna, maybe a Death Prophet is an option. If they want a hard carry, there's also the Morphling they can look at, as mentioned earlier. And, well, Vichy will ban the Enchantress. I think a really strong ban, as I explained earlier, just fits in nicely with this draft. They need someone who can push towers, because right now they don't have it. They have a good ganky lineup, good team fight, but they really struggle to take early towers, whereas Vichy have the Dragonite, so you know they can take towers, even if it's an even game. They can just pop the Dragonite ult, start right-clicking away. If you're just joining us, guys, we've got a, a lot of Dota action here on Beyond the Summit. Not only C-Deck New Star, but the GEST uh, challenge continues soon. It'll be, I believe, let's see here. Let me bring up my schedule real quickly while we wait for this last pick. It's going to be, ah, man, I'm bad at reading calendars, apparently. Newbie versus LGD, best of three. We'll have Zayori and Lysander casting that one for your viewing pleasure. So check that out at twitch.tv slash beyond the summit. I'll be sticking around here. Winner of this best of three will play DK uh, in a few hours' time. So, yep, there you go. They get the silencer, though, for IG. They go for a, uh, a much greedier support is really the only way to put it. No real laning pressure from this guy, but this makes IG's late game a lot scarier. And... Well, if they get the global and Batrider blink lasso combo, basically you just pop global, you go in with the lasso, and you can just pick anybody off. That's the, the fundamental idea behind the silencer pick. The other thing is when Tide blinks in, if you're quick on the global, you can just completely disrupt Vici Gaming's team fight. That being said, I'm not the biggest fan of silencer this game because Vici Gaming have two natural BKB builders in the Dragonite and the Luna, and generally that's where silencer struggles. This looks to be... It's going to be a support silencer, most likely, unless they want to run a... Yeah, I don't... I, it pretty much has to be. Uh, and assuming it is a support silencer, that means he's not going to farm like the Ags Refresher that we've seen Burning, Eternal Envy get in the past when they play the Safe Lane Farmer. So you only have the single global, and then BKBs just can be reserved. You, you wait until he globals, then you BKB and you turn the fight. Or maybe it is a farming silencer. The other option, which I was like, nah, they're not going to do it, is the... Uh, the jungle bat, but they're running faith on the bat rider, so maybe they are. Okay, I guess they will. They'll run the jungle bat rider here for faith. They'll they'll play greedy. It looks like we're gonna have a quick remake. And uh, well, now things just got a bit spicier. 
Luo, Silencer, in the safe lane. That was not something that VG Gaming expected. They were expecting, uh, much like me, the more the more standard draft. And we'll, we'll wait to make sure the, the game's actually remade. Yeah, looks like we are having a quick remake here, guys. So we'll, we'll get right back into it. But yeah, um, they were expecting a, a support to come out. And that's why they banned the Enchantress. But IG will catch VG off guard here with the draft. Now the question is, yeah, it's unexpected, but is it going to be good? And... I think the carry silencer is likely to be better than the support would have been this game, but I'm not sure about this jungle bat. A lot of it comes down to the early early few levels. Will Fichi Gaming go aggressive at level 1? They have the, the Tide Shadow Demon Marana, so I'd say right there. Their level 1 is very scary. At Disruption, pretty much means the first blood. So if you're Vici, there's a decent chance they consider going straight to the enemy jungle. They may even just run up the ramp mid rather than going like the, up the top lane. We see teams more often take the direct route, try and ward off the Batrider's jungle. And if they succeed in doing that and blocking his camps, IG are in a lot of trouble because that's where they they don't have many... They don't really have a plan B. You run a, a four-position bat. He can't just be like pulling. You need to be stacking and get your fast blink dagger out. You won't get enough farm from the pulls, so... Yeah, well, we'll see. I think this level one movement from the Radiant will be very important to determining how this game develops. We're waiting for the teams to get underway here. And we'll we'll, ha we'll go. So it's back underway. It's going to be a quick AP remake. Does mean the creeps will spawn a bit quicker, but it shouldn't play too much of a factor. Just waiting for the spectators to load in, guys. It's only game one of a best of three, and yeah, let's keep an eye on Vici Gaming's level one movement here. If they just let the bat freely farm the jungle, then this this four position bat could really pay off. Uh, of course, the other downside to running him in the jungle like that is it means Vici Gaming's offlane tide will have a, an easier time of it. But that being said, against Silencer, uh, pretty good at harassing a tide out of lane if he's at any kind of support. So yeah, I think I think a lot of it just comes down to this level one movement. Here's are being selected up and. Oh, we're about to get underway. It's showing all of them as having been selected. But yeah, we'll, we'll wait it out. In the meantime, guys, uh, there is a Dota TV ticket, I believe. So if you want to watch in-game, get some Elgato views, perhaps. Uh, you could consider picking that up. But at this point, the tournament is winding down. So if you're just joining us on the stream, then it's certainly appreciated. And the, the picks will continue coming out. Thank you for joining me, folks. It's good to be here. I'm just drinking my water. Sipping on my my caffeinated beverage of choice. Preparing for a long night. It's going to be a fun night. I, I've really enjoyed getting back into the Chinese Dota schedule. We had the summit. We were running around like crazy just preparing for the event. Honestly, barely got to watch or cast the games. But the past few days, past week or so, it's been good just to immerse myself in Chinese Dota. And as the, the road to TI4 draws near, just get a little bit more comfortable with the team. See exactly how they're playing from game to game. And you know, just do my homework, basically. So... Yeah, we'll, we'll see this level one movement from Vici, as mentioned. Very important to establish control over IG's jungle. Shut down the Bat Rider right away. And on that note, we'll introduce our team. So we've got Vici Gaming on the Radiant side. Siler are going to be playing your Luna. Fenrir, the Shadow Demon. Super, the Dragon Knight. We'll have FY on the Marana. And that puts RTK on the Tidehunter. Well, it doesn't have to be an offlane Tide, but we'll see how they want to lane it. Meanwhile, Faith, Boots first, is playing the Bat Rider. Luo on the farming... Silencer. We've got YYF on the Bristleback for now. They're going to the offlane, uh, but I don't think they'll be staying here with three. Chuan on your Rubik, 430 the Ember, and there was a Dire Observer Ward block drop. So they've seen Vici Gaming's movement, and they know this jungle is going to get warded. Unfortunately, there's just not much Faith can do. They sentry off the pull camp. They'll be going deeper here, though. The, the key camps to block are, are mainly this one, and as well as the medium camp. And well, They'll at least drop an Observer Ward down here. Let's see if they want to block this. Yeah, Fenrir, thinking about it. Thinking about it. Thinking better of it. Okay, not going to block it in the end. The battle begins. And now they'll see Faith mid. So IG clearly know that the Bat's jungle might be warded, and they're trying to make some potential adjustments here. Let's see where Faith ends up going. He may go aggressive jungle if he expects an aggressive try And In fact, that's what he's going to get. So, well, he's thinking, uh, is he going to do it? It seems like he wants to. Waiting to see this Tidehunter show his face, at least. Just chilling near mid for now. 
And while Shadow Demon snags a haste, and remember, IG did not really get to place an Observer Ward here near the mid lane, so they've got to be careful. Faith waiting in reserve. And now the pings start coming out. They they do expect some aggression from this top bird. And 430 is going to just sit back, play it safe for the time being. So they run the Silencer off lane, and as you can see, Silencer really matches up well against the Tidehunter. All that damage block doesn't help you too much against the pure damage of Glaives of Wisdom. Meanwhile, the Bat has made his way into the enemy jungle, and Faith will start farming here. So I really like what IG's doing. They know they, they don't really want to match up against this Luna Tri-Lane, especially not with the arrow disruption combo. It's a little dodge. Unfortunately, Faith does miss his first stack here. But uh, they can get the Silencer versus Tide matchup. Definitely a better matchup for them. The one thing they have to be careful about, though, is 430. If he gets caught by a disruption, he is most likely dead. As long as the arrow follows through. And that leaves Luna in a 1v1 against Bristleback. But the Bristle can't post up because he doesn't know where these supports are. They only have the single Observer Ward. And, well, we'll see Faith just doing some pulls. Hiding out in the jungle. He's just waiting for the, the two-minute stack and trying to leech his way to a level two, it looks like. Get the sticky napalm and, and then can start farming some stacks here in the jungle. So yeah, Luna with the, the threat of the gank always there is basically getting free from top lane. Eight and nine already. And should have a great time against the Bristleback, whereas normally you could be bullied quite a bit. Arrow will fly and it's going to connect on Faith. This could well be our first blood if they get off with disruption here. He's in a lot of trouble. No, they don't even need it. They just right click him down. Vici Gaming finding an easy opening for a first blood. The one thing now is, well, YYF can feel a little more confident in his lane, but the problem is they've already given Silar 10 last hits in the off lane. That's where he gets up his early boots. He gets a lot harder to run down with the 330 base move speed. As we have a chase for the top rune, no dragon tail, so 430 will snag that. But uh, now Faith goes back to his own jungle. The problem is, well, we're already three minutes in, has yet to get off a single stack, and with an Observer Ward here scouting him out, he could easily be ganked by the Shadow Demon Marana. You see the power of the Marana first pick. It just it offers you so much. Even though with Vici, you kind of know how they like to play it, which is almost always a support. We don't really see them ever run the carry Marana. It's still a strong pick, and you ban the Bane, you pick the Rubik. They just pick Shadow Demon instead. It's it's very difficult to shut down the Marana pick once you give it away. You just have to find the trades elsewhere in the game. Now they'll make their way back top. They're, again, there's this Observer Ward here, and, and one protecting the offlane, but actually, IG have no vision of the top rune. They have no idea where these supports are moving in the jungle, so they've got to play it defensively, and now, Faith is going to get spot out. He's only got a level 1 Firefly, and with the boots on the Shadow Demon online, Faith has to be very careful not to get caught. He's Oh, he actually gets disrupted! Surprise Fenrir had the range for that. Must have just had it. FY, though. Dude, couldn't line up an arrow on time, and, well, does he let one fly? Faith is actually going to tank it to the face! Faith didn't juke it! It came over the trees, he didn't expect it to come, and FY finds an easy kill. It is a one-for-one -one exchange, though. Uh, I thought Faith would be able to dodge that one. He had quite a bit of time to see it coming, but... Oh. And then FY. Insult to injury, stealing some last hits here on the neutrals. He's got a leap away if need be. Tron is out of mana, and... Just a, a very slow start for this greedy four-position bat. Again, going back to the draft, as I mentioned, it's just all about Vici's level one movement. They go in the jungle, they ward the jungle, they make IG feel uncomfortable top lane, and the bat can catch up. It's not that it'll be useless this game, but he's just been slowed down a lot. He can't feel too relaxed. And now, with the silencer stuck in the off lane, because the bat needs all this help, because they gave up a, a first blood bottom, now the silencer starts to get bullied a bit. He's got the level 2 last word, but you can see RTK fears nothing. And they're just not going to relieve this pressure. Faith is still only level 1. He doesn't even have a single point Sticky Napalm. And you need the levels with the, the change to Sticky Napalm and 6.81B. Your, your jungle is not as good at these early levels. You do a lot less damage from the Firefly. and well, The bonus damage just isn't quite as strong. Fenrir trying to run him down here. With the Tranquil Boots now, he's incredibly fast. But they don't have an angle for an arrow, so they'll back off and, and settle. Elsewhere on the map, uh, we haven't talked too much about it, but mid lane, it's good farm on the Dragon Knight. Uh, 22 and 6, the off lane Luna free farm at 24 and 14, and the tide is catching up nicely. We'll see a Lucent Beam, just a simple harassment from Vici. But they force this Bat Rider into the lane. This Observer Ward is really punishing Vici Gaming. Or sorry, uh, IG, not Vici Gaming. The other G. Fenrir used Disruption, though. He might get caught out here. He gets lifted, he gets dropped, and Faith flying high with the Firefly. We'll be able to bring him down, it looks like. That'll end the pursuit, but a nice little pickup and something they needed. 
to, to turn this game around a bit. Now, now Faith can go into the woods a little bit more confidently. Get his stacks on and... Well, the question is, is, it, is not if he gets the stacks, but whether Vici will let him farm them. They haven't actually smoked yet, and I imagine we may see one soon. There's already been one picked up by the Shadow Demon. Fenrir's gonna waltz through mid and... If they catch Faith with his hand in the cookie jar, right, as he's about to clean up this big stack, you're gonna have a useless bat rider. That's pretty much the the nitty-gritty of it. But they'll go on him later. For now, it's gonna be about 430. The arrow comes in. It's gonna connect along with the Soul Catcher. A lot of damage done to 430. Can he sip out in time? He's unable to. It's a max duration arrow by FY. Beautifully played. They didn't go for the disruption arrow. Had they gone for that, he might have been able to just zip out. Unless the arrow was directly on top of him when the disruption ended. So very smart play by Vici. Just dropping the, the Soul Catcher in well, game one. It seems to be all Vici all the way. They'll steal a neutral creep here. More pain for Faith. Only 800 gold. No Tranquil Boots online. Vici are just doing everything right. Gotta say. And I'm not really liking this four position Batrider pick. It just seems like Vici are... It's too easy to punish. IG tried to do all the right things. They tried to just put the bat aggressive jungle. They didn't try to contest because they knew Vici at the disruption arrow. They had the stronger level one, but now they're paying for it. There'll be a dragon tail available. Made it. Can go on 430 now. Will there be an angle for the arrow? FYI says, I just, I don't have it. So they won't go in. And Luo, he's just not having a, a good time bottom lane. So yeah, only 12 and 3. The tide's not 26 and 13. He hasn't died, but that's a small consolation. Another soul catcher comes through, but just a split second late on the arrow there from FY. He'll barely make his way out, and we'll see. Silar, it's his turn to get aggressive. His turn to try and harass in this jungle. And at this point, you look at IG, they're putting so much into the woods. They have a triple stack here in the woods. They've also got a big ancient stack mid as we see the action break out. Disruption will fly. Chuan's going to tank a loose and beam to the dome. The eclipse comes through. Silar stands and delivers. And 430 will be the next one down. He throws out a remnant. Can't zip to it in time. And Vici Gaming just dismantling IG with some early aggression. Really the staple for this team. Structures are Overall, both teams do like their early game aggression, Dyer's but Vici to me is... They're a little bit more reliant on it than any other Chinese team. And I'd say like 70 plus percent of their wins come from games where they, they hold a very early lead. Not really a, a team that likes to sit back and just trade farm. And they're finding the kills early. They're in their comfort zone. And they'll, they'll do a lot of damage to the mid tower. Meanwhile, what's the trade for IG? They've got stacks, but they haven't been farmed just yet. Faith's only level 3 on the jungle bat. And IG are just struggling to find the openings. The one thing they'll have going for them soon is the global. But you gotta ask, like, it's a global into what? Global into Sleight of Fist Searing Chains? Eh, not the best. They have no lasso, as I, I do miss a kill bottom lane. My apologies, as Luo gets picked off. By RTK. Didn't even have to use a Ravage. They just throw a Lucent Beam out there. But yeah, global into what? Uh, it's just not much. Rubik's only level 5. He hasn't stolen any good spells yet. The global is a lot scarier when you have the Blink Lasso. When you have a, a reasonably farmed Ember, at least level 2. Searing Chains and ideally a, a couple of extra points at Sleight of Fist where you can apply pressure. But in good news, Faith is finally finding his farm. He's... Finally find his farm. That's, uh, that's some alliteration for you right there. Bottom so they'll get the global, but I don't really expect them to do much with it yet. The Ravage will fly bottom lane. That's going to connect on Luo, and... Well, it's suddenly a level 9 tide for ROTK. He's level 11, or level 9, and the Marana on his team's level 4. He's four levels ahead of all of these heroes, including the four-position jungle bat, including the three-position, I guess you would call him, offlane silencer. This is trouble. Even the bristle's not very farmed. He's only sa he's their safe lane farmer, 46 and 14. He's getting out farmed by a dragon knight, and this just goes back to the early levels where, yeah, he had the safe lane against the Luna 1v1, but he didn't know where those other heroes were. They didn't have a ward that could spot their movement through the river. He only had the one ward here, and it's not really the best for uh, for seeing potential smoke ganks or pressure on the lane. So as a result, Vici. They're comfortably ahead now. 7,500 gold lead, 3,000 experience lead, and the 2,000 gold up now on the Luna. They aren't in any hurry, but I think we'll just see them continue to apply pressure soon. The Blink Dagger on RTK is about to come out. BKB coming for the Dragonite. And once they get those two items, you can just start taking the fights. Silencer can global. You can just reserve your BKB, pop it as a counter-initiation. You also have Ravage to counter-initiate. 
What's the global wears off? You're not killing Tide during the lasso at this point. IG just don't have enough burst. And yeah, they're, they're in good shape. They will try and kill off Super now. They'll lift him with a DD run on Ferrari. This would be a big kill if they can get it. But unfortunately, Super is too quick. He gets off the Dragon Tail. They did not have a Blink Lasso available. No, no Lasso and no Blink. So yeah, he's missing both ingredients for the Blink Lasso, boys. That's, a, that's an 0 for 2. And Super casually struts away. That's a kill maybe IG can claim if Chuan managed to get off a Dragon Tail in advance, but unfortunately didn't. But it looks like they are going to farm their stack safely, so that's very good news for IG. They, they need the farm to start catching up. Why well, we have working on the triple ancient stack? One, two, three. Yeah, now a, now a quadruple stack, and meanwhile, the Ember gets picked off mid by Super. Just a, a Dragon Tail into a Lucent Beam, and not even an arrow needed. Casual celebratory Starfall by FY, and now Vichy will apply the pressure mid. They'll work on this tier 1 tower, and Vichy, IG just don't really have good tower defense. I mentioned they're, they're, they don't have good push, but... You look at their counter push, it's only really global into Blink Lasso that lets them halt the aggression. Otherwise, what do you do? You walk in with YYF, you're still going down. He's not tanky enough to withstand all the nuke damage from Vichy and doesn't actually have his mech complete yet. We'll see the second round of aggression soon. BKB coming on the Dragon Knight, the Luna. Goes for Midas, so Vichy will secure a little bit of late game insurance. And they'll let it fly. Blink Ravage casually thrown out by RTK. Top lane, but... Well worth it. The bat was up to 1,900 gold. Very close to his blink dagger. Actually, I love that use of Ravage there. Oftentimes it'd be like, huh, really RFTK? But when the bat blink is that close, well worth it. And Meanwhile, Fenrir's going to strike first. The support roaming five position Shadow Demon will pick up his blink. I call him five, but he's a lot more farmed than the Murata. Maybe he's really a four position. He'll pick it up first. They'll throw an arrow out. That's going to actually connect on 430. The Dragon Tail's available. They'll stack the stuns perfectly. Starfall will fly. And with the Soul Catcher, they'll bring him down even through the Flame Guard. It's just not enough defensive capabilities. In game one of this best of three, Vici Gaming are firing on absolutely every cylinder. Just dismantling IG, really. And they're close to that second wave of items. Once they get them, I mean, what do IG do? Again, as I mentioned, their best option seems to be a global into a lasso. I think they need to move with a four or five, though. If they want to get a kill, Tide, DK, very tanky, Luna, likely to be off the map or with heroes backing her up. They're not going to leave this Luna unprotected really far up in a lane, most likely. In fact, they're, they're parked behind her right now with Tide and Marana waiting. So... Yeah, I don't know what that... Well, they might find Silar here with the Stolen Arrow. That's the that's the main thing. It's just find these pickoffs with the Global Lasso, the Global Arrow. We'll see another Arrow. Arrow Wars. Now a Blink Disruption Initiation, and in comes RTK, but he doesn't actually have his, his ultimate. Now they'll silence, they'll counter-initiate here. They'll Lasso in Silar. He has Eclipse, he's got Stick Charges. He will end up going down, I believe, but YYF will be the trade. Super Arty with the BKB delivered. He's tanky. He's in the front lines trying to finish off YYF. Can they do it in time, though? He's not dead yet. The arrow comes through. That's going to connect. Another big arrow from FY. And they just keep on chasing forward. Blink forward from RTK. They'll find Faith as well. This Tide's too tanky. They toss him in. He says, great. The easier for me to dive you. Kill you under your tower. Then take the tower next. Luo will be on the list. Silo rejoins the fight. I believe he actually bought back for this one. He did. He finds two kills. And now 430. He'll be next on the list, it looks like. FY's going to clean him up. Double buyback from v IG. They want to turn this fight around against Vichy, but they go in one at a time. Can YYF do it? He can probably bring down Silar here. No stick charges. He gets Dragon Tail, though. Silar looks to run away. Meanwhile, Luo joining the fight. They'll bring down the tie, but they're going to lose the bristle again, I believe. He's just not tanky enough. Starfall comes through. No, he sticks up. He backs up. He is tanky enough, perhaps, to live. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps not. He'll go down. The Murana gets at the, just an absolute bloodbath top lane. But in the end, Vici Gaming coming out well on top there. I believe that was a double or triple buyback from IG. We'll actually check, check the buybacks now. Yeah, double buyback for them. Single back buyback for Vici and IG giving up. In the end, I think four or five kills at the end of that fight. At least four, possibly five. So, well, Vici just having that advantage. And, oh, the, and the level advantage. And, oh, by the way, that was without Ravage. They didn't actually have Ravage for the fight. It's only now come online, so... Just imagine that fight with Ravage, with Eclipse used in the Radiant's first initiation. And you uh, you see the, the idea behind... I guess the, the thing worth mentioning is you do see the idea behind IG's lineup, which is you global, and then you just go in with Lasso and pick heroes off. But the problem is, they're so far behind they do that, they already get the Luna, and they have to dive the Tier 1 to do it. At which point, the turnaround comes. Alright, we'll come through another snipe. Easy pickings! Or FY is super sets up yet another kill for this very threatening Marana.
Vici gave me looking good and they just played it right, man. From the laning stage onwards, they didn't let this four position bat get his early blink dagger up. They shut down the jungle. They punished the silencer. They had the great early roaming and made it work. And now they look for more kills. They will actually connect an arrow on YYF. Barely making its way through at Faith, but in the end, it's it's better this way. They'll probably get an extra kill as a result. Another Dragon Tail comes forth. Something stolen here. For, it is a Star Storm, but is it going to be enough? They global, and that may force Vici Gaming back for the time being. Just kidding. Fenrir wants to go in. They'll disrupt. They'll set up the arrow. Another connection from FY. Vici finding the openings everywhere they turn. Too easy. And now they get to play Vici Gaming Dota. Maybe Silar is... is Farming a bit more and focusing on stacking the Ancients, but for the most part, it's just aggressive five-man Dota. Every time your ultimates are online, you take the fights. And they've got them. They've got a mech now on RTK. That, that, they didn't have Ravage last fight, top lane. They also, until the very end, and they also didn't have this mech, but now they've picked both up. So their team fight just leveled up at, by several orders of magnitude. And IG, I think, just pretty much have to sack the tower. Yeah, there's no global. You don't have Lasso. Uh, you're not defending this. You're just not. They'll have to give this tower up and try for a trade. Chinese Dota. The scene's just been so back and forth lately. Nubian and DK had their epic triple best of three yesterday. It was a 4-4 tie in terms of overall games played. But in terms of the series wins, it did go Nubi's way, I believe, 2-1. to one. They took two of the three best of three. So that was close. The last time IG and Vici played, it was a 2-1 victory going the way of IG. LGD's been taking games off of most of these teams and... Really, your top five Chinese teams headed to TI. They're all beating each other. So it, I'd say if you had to power rank them, I'd put Nubi and DK slightly ahead of the other three, but only very slightly. It's so neck and neck now. IG will smoke and they'll find Vici, but they found the wrong hero. They found the watermelon and he's he's too big, too big to, to crack. They'll just back off and let him live. And now, after it's all said and done, we look at Vici with a, a 12k gold lead, a 10k experience lead. They're fishing for an FY initiation mid. They've smoked up on Faith. They want to lasso him, but he's just playing this one so well. He's to the south of the tower. Well, as I say, that'll get lassoed. He will get caught out here, lifted up, and didn't get off the leap in time. We'll end up going down. But they'll take a tier 1 in exchange, and I think they're going to defend mid. Do they go for the tower tonight? No, they can't find it. Flame break. Not even skilled yet. The Bristleback gets the last hit, and now they go in. The Purge Luo, they've got a defensive disruption at the ready, and now the Tide comes in. Say hello to the Watermelon, ROTK ravaging on three. He'll find YYF up there, they'll bring down the two supports, and now, with a Shadow Blade on the Dragon Knight, they can look for YYF as well. They can chase him down with a DD rune on Super, it'll be an easy stun into a kill. Do they want that bonus damage? I think they would have gush, and then they'll go. No, they just get the Dragon Tail up, that's all they really need. The Soul Catcher comes through, and now YYF slowed down, he'll be chased down in short order here. Gets disrupted for good measure, the Warcraft 3 surround, it's on, YYF. He will fall. It's a beatdown. At this point, it's... IG of some late game potential here. If they ever had a farm, Silencer, Bat, Ember, they'd be very scary, but... How are they gonna find the farm? For here, like Silencer, you have a bad laning stage, you just... It's not a comeback here. He's He doesn't split push, he's very squishy and easy to gank. His ultimate's such a long cooldown that... One misuse just costs you a tower, if not a Rax, and... I think when you pick Silencer in a game like this, Vici just knew how to handle it. They... They first of all saw it as a four position bat, but they also saw that a BKB carry would be very scary, and now they've got two. The Dragonite that was already picked, and Sil Silar as well on the Luna. They will find the opening here in Super, they'll try to bring him in, but this is not the ideal lasso target. He's a full HP, they did nothing to him during that lasso, they haven't even used their Ravage yet. Tron is still in an Eclipse, that's a big spell to steal, but can he make the openings happen? He pops the Eclipse, he marches back in, but he's only connected on creeps, Fenrir's gonna leap forward, it's just... It's not enough, unfortunately. Chuan, even with the stone eclipse, still takes a loser beam. GG from IG. They get face rolled. They can't even tickle Vici. And they get just dominated in game number one. It's a best of three. They'll have their shot at revenge here, but boy oh boy. IG was not prepared. Vici had him from the word go. Well, guys, uh, I think I beat that one to death. I, I wasn't a big fan of the four-position bat, but I was a big fan of Vici Gaming's early movement. It was a nice idea and strategy for IG on paper, but Vici just had all the answers to shut it down. So that being said, it's a best of three. I'm LD. You can follow me on Twitter at LDDota. 
I'll be coming back very soon with game number two. You're watching the CDEC New Star Cup presented by Beyond the Summit. We'll see you in just a few moments.